So, Alex, you're a storyteller. Can you tell me a little bit about why stories are so important to you? They've always been important to me, ever since I was a child. But essentially, I think it's because we can, we can all relate to a story. We are, we're all living our own lives. Our, all of us are in our own stories, creating them as, as we live. And I just... I work with stories from all over the world, the old stories, the stories that have lasted millennia, that have stood the test of time, and that still, even now in this modern world, speak to us. They, there's something that we can connect with, whether it's the, um, the small boy who has to overcome the, the dreadful giant. You know, we, we're all facing challenges all the time. And, and sometimes by working with story, it helps us to recognize and to understand things that are going on in our own lives, which, which we wouldn't be able to do quite so easily because we wouldn't be able to identify with the monster or the hero or the, the magical component of a story. We may not recognize it in the detail of our own lives. So. Um, there's so much to say about why stories are important to me, but essentially, really, I, I, through, through my work and working with stories for the last 15 years, I've seen how they have the power to transform people's lives. Um, they can heal, they relax, they inspire, they challenge us, they teach us, um, they make us laugh. They make us cry. They put us in touch with things that um, we all enjoy. You know, that's why people like going to the cinema or reading a good book, because we all think through narrative. It's how we make sense of the world. So, so for me, working with stories, it, I feel like I've, I'm able to share stories that I know, which can help other people to fulfill their own potential in some ways, in whatever way, whether it's personally, whether it's through their work, whether it's in their health, it's so many different aspects. And you've created your business called Storywell in which you take stories out into the community. Can you tell me something about Storywell? My original training after I left teaching was with the Sesame Institute as a drama and movement therapist and a major part of that training was story um, and looking at the importance of story from a Jungian perspective. And through working with story in that way, what I've learned is that stories themselves become a safe container. Let me give you an example. I can, I'm currently working in residential care homes for the elderly. Um, and often people say, it's a, you know, quality of life in care homes can be an issue and people may not be engaging with each other or talking. And of course, our elderly have so many stories to tell because they've got a lifetime. So what I do is I go into a home and I'll tell a story to a group and then I'll ask people what their thoughts and feelings are about the story afterwards. And that might give them an opportunity to remember stories in their own lives which have been triggered um, or inspired through the telling. Or it could mean that um, if the story that I've told has got specific themes in it, say loss and grief, it gives people the chance to then talk about their own experience of loss and grief in a way that isn't so challenging or confrontational. Taking stories into the community, and in this example, into care homes, I see myself helping people just to engage with aspects of their own lives which they might otherwise not talk about. Um, and in doing so, they then, they're connecting with themselves, but they're also connecting with other people because by sharing by beginning to share their experiences, um, they're, they're, they're learning to support each other in many ways. And, and in that way, you know, none of us are alone in any of our experiences. And um, 
particularly when we feel that we're suffering with something like you know experiencing grief it's it's important for people to know that they're not alone and that there are other people who are trying to come to terms with it as well but Storywell isn't just about you know working in the community and around health and well-being I see Storywell working in education whether it's with young learners adult learners um, in a corporate and training environment and in business um, I, I see that, you know, the, I was talking to someone the other day who works for the Ministry of Defence and they were, they were going through all sorts of changes, outsourcing people. And there's this whole thing about people wanting more than they perhaps need. They want their six weeks normal holiday pay, but they also want their two weeks sick pay. So, which isn't quite honest, because if someone isn't sick, then why should they claim two weeks sick pay. So something like honesty or clear communication, a story can help bring those issues into the room, help people discuss and air things which actually are quite difficult to confront. But stories are a metaphor, so we can talk about any subject with them. So that's great, Alex. Thanks so much. And I understand you have a story for us today. Um, called the Rainbow Serpent, I think, and, and somehow Einstein fits into it. Can you tell us something about that? Well, I've chosen the Rainbow Serpent today because it's a creation myth um, from the Aboriginal culture, one of the old, oldest cultures in the world. And, um, and the reason why Einstein is important here is because Einstein really thought that storytelling was crucial in a child's development and, and and in the way that children are able to engage and learn through their imagination. It's like play. We know that children play, really learn a great deal through play. Um, so, so this connection with Einstein and the rainbow serpent is almost like if we, if we imagine things, then we're putting energy into the power of a thought and that thought can then become a reality and the rainbow serpent is without giving too much away it's really all about that it's all about the in, having the intention and how through the dream time the creation of the world came into being and all its creatures and um, and, and landscape and the purpose of these films, um, and well, this film, um, is to give me the opportunity to talk about how and why landscape is important in what I do. And landscape's always been important to me. In a way, landscape was the first story I connected to, um, in the sense that it gave me a framework to explore some of my own feelings and emotions and my own journey through life and and in a way that's what we're all doing as we go through life and trying to make sense of things and because landscape is its own story it's always changing you know whether in the northern hemisphere it's through the seasons or every day the sun sets you know the moon rises day and night all these natural occurrences are taking place all the time and they are the backdrop to all stories um, so the connection is there all the time and the rainbow serpent seemed like a, a great story to sort of be the first story, so to speak, on film. <laughs> Once, a long, long time ago, before the creation of everything, before the stars, the skies, the seas, the earth was a red ball of sand, empty of everything. Beneath the sand lay the dreamers. The dreamers were dreaming of everything and everyone that would be. And so it was for a long time. Until one day, two enormous eyes opened beneath the sand. The first dreamer had awoken. The first dreamer 
had dreamt it would be the first to awaken, had dreamt that it would have the body of an enormous snake, that every scale of its body would be a different colour. And so it was called the Rainbow Serpent. The Rainbow Serpent pushed and pushed its way to the top, to the surface of the earth. It passed by all the other dreamers, waiting to awaken. As it emerged at the surface of the earth, it left a wide, gaping hole. It journeyed north, east, south and west, carving great hills of red sand, gouging out deep valleys, and where it came to rest, it would curl up into a ball, leaving wide, dry basins. Eventually, after it had travelled all the way around the world, it returned to the wide, gaping hole from which it had emerged. And lifting its head up high, it began to sing. It sang the first song, the song to awaken the next of the dreamers, who were the frogs. There were tens and thousands of dreamers waiting to awaken to be frogs. Different shapes, different colours, different sizes. But each one of them had a belly full of fresh water. They came out of the hole slowly, their bellies heavy. The rainbow serpent moved amongst them, and with the tip of its tail and the tip of its tongue, it tickled their tummies until they laughed. And oh, how they laughed! They chuckled and giggled until the waters flowed from their mouths, pouring into the deep red sand, gathering into streams, into rivers, merging until finally those rivers filled those dry, wide basins that had been the Rainbow Serpent's resting place. And following the waters of the sea, the seas were created, the oceans were created. The next to awaken was the vegetation, the plants, the trees, the flowers and meadows. The green, lush growth spread across the land, following the Rainbow Serpent's song. And then came the wind. The wind awoke, leapt into the branches of the trees, skimmed across the water, creating mist, spray and waves. And then the stars, the sun and the moon and the sky itself all awoke and took their place high amongst the heavens. Before finally the song awoke all the creatures that we have ever known on the planet today. The bears, the kangaroos, the insects, the fish, the birds, they all awoke to the sound of the song. They had become the reality that they had forged with their dreaming.